Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you are using a VR headset which uses Steam VR tracking, in other words, it uses the lighthouse tracking for outside in tracking, where you have sensors on here and lighthouses on your walls or set up on stands, etc., then you may have a problem with using a Fanatec Direct Drive wheelbase. So I have a CSL DD, but this is not exclusive to the CSL DD other wheelbases such as the DD1 and DD2 also have this problem and it seems to be an EMI issue, electromagnetic interference, uh, poor shielding on this wheelbase. So let me demonstrate it guys, you can see everything looks fine. What you're seeing here is what I would see through the headset. If I just push it down, this is exactly what I'm seeing and it's all obviously looking fine but if I touch it like so, in various parts of this headset with just a single finger it is going grey and what's happening the best of my knowledge I can tell you guys is um, what's happening is the interference when I touch it is now causing the tracking sensors on this headset to basically get be temporarily disabled each time I do this and you can see I'm not obscuring any of the um, of the actual tracking things themselves I'm just literally holding bits on the side, left and right. Um, there's bits I can hold on this headset which are absolutely fine, but if I go just basically around here, it will uh, kind of disable. And the same problem I've discovered this with the Pimax as well, and that uses Steam VR uh, tracking as well with the lighthouses. Exactly the same problem, I touch it. In fact, the Pimax is even more sensitive to this. Um, and just let me demonstrate, guys, just to show you, it is to do with this wheelbase. Um, I'm not sure if you can see the light on here, but it is on. So if we just disable it, turn it off effectively. And now I can do the same thing. I can put my hands all over this and it is absolutely fine until I absolutely do obscure the, the tracking. But as you can see here, I'm having no issues doing exactly the same thing. It is working absolutely fine so let me turn it back on just to demonstrate it is the csl dd so emi interference is not exclusive to um you know the csl dd you know people with uh, motion rigs can sometimes have this problem as well but um this does seem to be quite a common problem and some people may not be aware of it so if you are thinking of getting this combination of um you know uh, headset type of headset with this tracking and also a Fanatec direct drive wheelbase then you may experience this as well if you have experienced this do drop a comment below the video and indeed if you have a headset like the index and you're not experiencing it using one of these Fanatec DDs then please drop a comment as well because I'm, I'm not here trying to um, you know scare anyone off but um, you know my I've discovered I have this problem and a lot of people out there do have this problem as well so this is just an advisory to be careful there is a potential fix for it, which I did try, but I'd say it did not work for me. But um, I will at least give you the information about it. There's also a link in the description to um, a uh, another YouTuber who actually shows it and also talks about it. And this is where I got this fix from using toroids. Um, and there's also a link in the description to um, a, a thread on Reddit which also goes into this a lot of people are talking about it and also going through different fixes so one of the main fixes is using these toroids so this is my cable which is suspended from the ceiling and what you need to do is get this and actually go to the end of the cable um, out of this lead here and then just basically wrap it around a few times using two of these toroids and hopefully what that can do it, it basically can mitigate the interference I have to say it did not work for me, but I know it has worked for a lot of people. Um, I've got two of these. I even used four, up to four, and it did not work. So that is an issue for me, guys. Uh, but the good news is it has worked for some people. And I'm going to bring out my Pimax now, and I'll show you the same problem. And I'll show you it does work with these, with the Pimax. Okay, so we have the Pimax on now, and you can see the... Red light is on, so the CSL DD is on. So let's do a test now. Just put my finger on it and just see when the tracking goes wrong. You can see it swims and it disappears and it should come back as I would move my finger. I can do it on the other side as well. And it will basically do the same thing. So there you go, uh, same problem. We're having some interference 
from the direct drive wheelbase here. Um, okay, let's try and fix it. You can see this is the cable and we will wrap the toroids around here and see how we get on. Okay, we're back and I have the cable wrapped around the toroids as you can see on the table there. We'll take a closer look in a moment so you can see how that is wrapped around, but it's pretty simple stuff. And I'll just run the same test and I'll just, you can see I am uh, handling the headset and I am not getting any issues at all with the tracking. It is now stable and solid, working as it should. And you can see it is on the CSL DD. There's no trickery here. It is fixing the problem for me. So sadly, it didn't fix the problem for me on the index, but it is working just fine on the Pimax. So this solution may fix it for you with your index. Check the description, guys. Look at those links. Look at the uh, Reddit thread. There is more reading material out there for you if you are having this problem. And I guess it's a cautionary tale if you are going to uh, be getting a VR headset for sim racing and you are going to get a, maybe a DD from another brand because we know the Fanatec ones are susceptible to this. Uh, yeah, do your research just in case before you uh, before you kind of buy that combination just to be sure. Check with the, um, the seller, of course. Um, but of course, yeah, this is a problem that seems to be um, very much... Um, commonplace with the Fanatec DD wheelbases. So CSL DD and the DD1 and DD2. That's the way it goes. Okay, let's take a closer look at the cables. I've used uh, cable ties to hold the two toroids together just for convenience. It's just neater, stops them smacking around. Um, you can see I have three wraps around these rings. Uh, simple enough, you go in and around, you know, and then out, simple as that guys. Nothing too special. Um, of course, you lose a little bit of cable length with this, but it is a fix, so you know it's it's worth doing. And you can see it's right at the end of the cable, so you can see where it connects to the PC. And, and that's it, simple as that, and it has uh, fixed it for me. So hopefully if you're having this problem, um, and hopefully you're not having this problem, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, yeah, that'd be great to hear if you're not having a problem, because as I said, I'm not trying to scare anyone. This is just basically a common problem, a lot of people are experiencing it, and this is the fix for it, and hopefully the fix for you. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, I'll be back soon with something new. So until next time, happy simming, and bye-bye.